Hey, it's James Murray. We're at the Valhalla Inn at the Forestry Expo. I'm here with Bruce Heyer, the MP for Thunder Bay Superior North, and David Robertson, who's a candidate for the Green Party, who's in town today because of the Forestry Expo. Gentlemen, welcome. And nice to see you, James. So it's budget day yesterday. No, it wasn't. <clears throat> what was it, Bruce? What it is is political fat brochure <laughs> day, 518 pages with no spreadsheets, no balance sheets, no financial information, barely any numbers, <clears throat> mostly promises for a couple of years from now. Um, you know, if I ran my small business, if any small business guy ran his business the way the government did, of course they can do what I can't do, they can print money. But if I ran my business the way they do, seat of the pants, um, smoke and mirrors, and no real numbers for us to look at, maybe even they don't have numbers, um, my businesses would be bankrupt. So, sorry, it's not a, it's not a budget. <clears throat> It's a bunch of political promises leading toward an election. Bruce, the Budget Implementation Act will be sort of half a budget coming later. Sorry David, about the David, correction. I, I What's your view? Gonna say, I think it's brilliant. They're taking credit for all of this spending that the next government has to do. They've managed to pretend they haven't sunk the boat because they've got to snorkel up and they can say, <laughs> I can still breathe. It's brilliant. It's a completely political budget. There isn't one serious problem it addresses. And they've left a poison pill for the next government. You know, we promise you're never going to be able to run a deficit again. This is the government that always runs deficits. The large, they've still got a real deficit. The largest budget deficit. budget deficit in the history of Canada. This Even they say to Brian, Brian Mulroney's. $140 billion, Bruce. Yeah. $140 billion. It's easy if you say it fast. $140 billion. You remember, you remember C.D. C. D. Howe, he got turfed when he said, ah, what's a million dollars? Now we'd have to say, ah, what's $140 billion? <laughs> the, numbers, the numbers probably overwhelm most people because they don't think of numbers that big. How about start dividing, dollars a, a person? That doesn't sound so bad to the average person who right now is, is in debt and they're running up their credit card and everything else. They're going, oh, well, what the heck? Was there anything good in the budget? Yes. Um, I lobbied for a couple of things, and I got them. I won't say it's cause and effect, but I was pleased. Even though it's delayed, I'm glad there's a billion bucks for infrastructure and transit money, and that can help Bombardier here, here, and it can also help the climate. So, indirectly, although in 518 pages, they never mention climate change. Not a single word about climate change. But um, there's also some tax breaks uh, for mining. And that was a good thing. Nothing for forestry, nothing for tourism. At a time with the 20% uh, difference in the dollar, it's the time to jump, jump start manufacturing, forestry, value added, and tourism. That was disappointing. But there was some good stuff for uh, mining in there. Well, Brian Davies from NADF was saying to me earlier today that the reason for this forestry expo was the number of small businesses that have been coming to NADF to borrow money to expand forestry. So, you know, hopefully there's something going on, not just a massive number of pages in a budget creating a new demand for, for bond paper. The federal government could be helping to jumpstart forestry industries in Northern Ontario right now. It is the Ontario government that has really messed this up, but the federal government could be helping and it's not helping. Now, what about on the issue of mining? There seems to be uh, one step forward, two steps back, two steps forward, one step back, especially in the ring of fire. And there's a lot of environmental concerns being raised, especially at the grassroots First Nations levels, Bruce. What have you been hearing on that? Well, of course, those that want to see the ring of fire uh, development are frustrated because there's no real plan um, on how to go forward in a logical, orderly way, and the ones that are opposed to it are frustrated because it looks like it'll happen. So the pro-mining people are frustrated and the anti-mining people are frustrated. That's a lose-lose. Um, in a former life, I used to write and review environmental impact statements. Here they're called environmental assessments. And where I came from, they were real numbers. Uh, they were very objective. Uh, here uh, they're mostly pros. But I have really rarely, if ever, seen a good environmental assessment stop a project, but they do make them better. What the best ones are is a well-rounded business plan that internalizes all the costs and all the scenarios and makes a bad plan better. Occasionally it stops a really bad one, but 
Um, I think most of us would like to see that develop, but uh, it's not going anywhere. Sooner would be better than, than not, but it's, it's not going to be quick, it's not going to be easy, and it, it's not going anywhere until after this next election, for sure. So, moving on from the budget, today is Earth Day. Day. And um, that probably means more to the Green Party as a day than it does to any of the other political parties in Ottawa. What yes. Well, especially given this little factoid, and that is that um, I helped to start the very first Earth Day, and Elizabeth helped to start the very first Earth Day. We both were born in Hartford Hospital in Connecticut. We grew up five miles apart, miles not kilometers in those days. And in 1970, I was the Earth Day coordinator in Connecticut, and a high school volunteer organizing other high school volunteers was Elizabeth May. And uh, so for me, this is uh, in many ways an Earth Day birthday. <laughs> and I don't know uh, when you're going to air this, but tonight, April 22nd, at 9 p.m. at the Foundry in downtown Port Arthur, we have an Earth Day birthday party. No cover, great uh, bands. Uh, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, the Foundry was just featured on You've Got to Eat Here, so Thunder Bay is getting a, a good growing place for reputation for its restaurants. If you're heading out for Earth and Day... And it's Sleeping Giant uh, Craft Beer, so... <laughs> okay, so... Earth Day birthday, birthday uh, with the celebration of Earth Day and Sleeping Giant Craft Beer and great music. And, and I'm guessing you're not offering to buy a round to everybody who comes in and says they saw the video on Net News Ledger tonight. Sure, I'll do that. There you go. There's a plug. <laughs> it's James with Net News Ledger here talking Earth Day and talking budget here at the Valhalla Inn.